podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV. Major funding for the Woodwright Shop is provided by... More than 40 million people who care for their cars and homes choose State Farm for their insurance. State Farm, a proud supporter of the Woodwright's shop. If you head up into the beautiful Adirondack Mountains of New York, you're sure to find beautiful mountains, pristine lakes. But if you're lucky enough to get up into the hills over Scroon Lake, New York, you just might encounter a young lady working on a shaving horse making wonderful rustic furniture. Hello, Skye. Hi, Roy. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, folks. This is Sky Gregson. And Sky, I last saw you when you were, I think, 12 years old. But you've been helping out with the family making rustic furniture since, since when? Well, since about I was nine years old, and my family and I have been working on different facets of the uh, rustic chair. Ah, this is wonderful. Rustic furniture here in the Adirondack style, where you take the sticks and the natural shapes of the forest and make this wonderful, durable, but still whimsical furniture. And I see you're working on a piece right there. What's that? That's right. I'm taking a blunt doll blade, a draw knife, yeah. and uh, we're shaving off the layers of the bark until we get to the hard layer of the apple. And this is an apple rung that you'd see on one of these chairs right here. Actually. And this is the kind of chair you're making right now. You know, I'd love to see how you build this whole thing. Is that something we could take a look at? Certainly. Let's head on over to the shop. I'll grab these sticks here. And if you grab these yellow birch roots, <laughs> right. we'll take them on right. over. Gnarly stuff. Here we go. Well, here we are at the shop. Oh, my gosh. you got enough wood here for a million chairs. Oh, this is great. <laughs> the lilac piles, we got yellow birch roots, and we've got cherry burrows, we got uprights in the ceiling, oh we got rockers, God. we got it all. Gosh. You're more welcome to put that there. Well, how, like. long, how long does this stuff have to season before you can use it? Well, uh, we let it dry for about a year or two. Um, some pieces dry for a lot more, but we get to them. And you know exactly what's in here down in the bottom of this pile. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> Well, hey, speaking of season, here's a seasoned hey, gentleman of woodcraft, Barry Gregson. Great to Good see you again. Good to see you. It's been about 10 years and I guess 10,000 chairs on your part. Now, you've got a big run of chairs here, too. What's this here? This is a side chair. we got to make another 120. We lost them, 120 of them in a fire up in Lake Placid oh, in a no. restaurant. So oh, we what a tragedy. Do it again. Oh my gosh, but this is the kind of chair you're going to show us how to make now. Yep, this is a side <laughs> chair, the dining chair that we do. Uh, Dad does other styles, rockers and fancy chairs, but this is what I'm learning right now. Uh, we start off here with the back uprights, and uh, we look for some front uprights to go with them and do the sides, both the sides, and then we do the back and then the front. Mm -hmm. um, other artists may do it differently. They may start with the, the back and the front and then put on the sides, but this is how Dad showed me and my brothers. Yeah, side, side, back, front, seat. Yeah. That's right. All right. And I love the wood you're using here. You say ash uprights, is that right? And then um, apple here. Yep, ash uprights, and this is an apple rung, and we uh, burnish that down until it gets to a hard cavity layer, and it gives us a little calco cat wow. color there. That's wonderful. This is right under the bark there, so that that beautiful brown color. And you let that, Barry, you age that outside in the rain? Yes, we let it sit for about six months with snow hitting it, the rain hitting it, and it, it tans the bark and then tans that cavity layer and makes it dark like that. Oh, it's beautiful. Well, I tell you what, this, we're going to... Oh, I like that. And it all matches together, so the whole blend of woods here. But I tell you, we've got to take this away, because I would like to start with the bare bench and let you guys show me from the get-go how you do this. You've got all your wood gathered. You've let it dry. How do you begin? Have some maple uprights here. All right. So I guess that's where you start. Yes. We, right. we start with the uprights in the back. And all right. We look for a nice bend here, a little kick out. So this is the back of the chair. Back here. All right. right. And I'm, I'm here at the front. All right. Yeah. And then just... There's the possibility. Does that work? Mm, well, that doesn't look like it has any kind of swoop or kickback right there to that. Um, an hourglass <laughs> shape, but not yeah, it's not as nice. <laughs> okay. it doesn't You're count. looking for Reject. something there. I, all right, I don't know what. 
but uh, maybe I'll know it when we see it right. You look here and see that still doesn't quite match there. And you yeah, got the hourglass right. shape going, but this still doesn't have enough kick out. All right. No. How about this one? Um, I don't know. Let's see then. So you just keep mm, bringing this them This looks in. nice, but it probably would go better at this height, huh? We can cut see, off that little hoof down oh, there. All right. And I, I can see it there. This does have a kind of symmetry to it. Nice yes, hourglass a nice shape. hourglass shape here in the back. Oh, this it's where the back is going to be. And that's why you need so many pieces of wood, so you can draw from this inventory. and yeah, Sift through a whole slew of them and see what works. <laughs> see what works, see what wants to play together. Yeah. All, right. All right. We have Now we're going to lay one of these down here. Uh -huh. And uh, we're going to take a front upright here that we've put aside, and we look to make sure the air is like this. So you decide what the orientation is front to back now. Mm -hmm. And then uh, here's a seat rung I did, and I put the number one with an arrow, so I'll put it like that. All right. Now, wait a minute. Now, this one has a tenon on it. Uh, this yes. has been trimmed down. Can we see how you do that before we go on any farther? Uh, sure. Yeah, let's all take right. a look at that. What have you got? Here? Oh, all right. Here um, is a um, tenon cutter that we use, and this has got a metal hole in here, and we got two uh, sides to shave it down. We try to aim uh -huh. going centered down on there so it uh, gets so a nice little shoulder on there. All right, so it's like a pencil sharpener kind of thing there. Yeah, yeah absolutely. With two blades. That's right. All right. And we'll shave this down. Crank it's it down there with the brace. Rung, yep. Uh -huh. And uh, peeling it right around. Look at that, see how well. Now this is one you can out. buy, I guess. Uh, people are making these now, but uh, I know you guys had this made by a machinist for you, so you make them yourself. Though, is this a wooden one? This is a wooden one that Dad made quite some years ago, and he put his own metal plate on there, and ah. that's another type of uh, pencil sharpener type this, deal. Sky, you must have been doing this when you were very little. Uh, you remember doing this as a little girl? Yep, I remember doing this, and my brothers as well. We're all down here, Dad's little elves. <laughs> in the workshop making chairs. <laughs> that's so. right. <laughs> that's great. All right, so that's the tenons, and this will cut, I guess, a little bit bigger one, but you have to be very precise, I imagine, in the size of these things. That's right. We want it straight so when we uh, put them through the uprights that it doesn't bust them out. Ah, that would, that would be bad. Yeah, that would bust be bad. Bust them out would be bad. All right. And so here we them. go. We have got uh, an upright back, an upright front, and now you're laying out the cross pieces. They've got their tenons on them, and I guess you want these to be really good and dry. Yep. These are pretty dry. Um, sometimes they're a little bit wet, but uh, you don't want to put them too together too wet they'll shrink or um, expand. Yeah we have these very dry and then these could be just slightly moist the uprights can but the rung's got to be positively dry. All right it looks like you're, you're working very thoughtfully there. I see rubber bands. Yes I, I use these rubber bands here to hold uh, these here in place so that they uh -huh. won't um, I got you. Twist. I, I got, got you. these marks on here. Well, here, let me do one, too. This is great. Yeah. I know they've been making rustic furniture for uh, 100, 200 years, at least. I don't know what it would be without rubber bands <laughs> and rubber some bands. masking tape. You've got to have the great masking tape. Technical. Well, that's one thing I've discovered, you know, figuring out. You don't want to cut the piece, but you want to kind of visualize where it is. So you put masking tape around the length of it and eyeball it and kind of imagine this thing before you commit. Yeah, All so right. we try to get a general idea before we start whacking away. All right. So, temporary assembly here. And as long as the arrow is pointing here, good. Uh -huh. And then if these are pointing one, two, three, and I've got them numbered, and they're all pointing the same way. Ah, all right. So then I can take them and mark them. So you don't want these to rotate along their axis because the tenon might be uh, uh, cockeyed. Yeah, yeah. they wouldn't okay. try one together here properly. Ah, I see. All right. Mm -hmm. So now you just mark on the sides and that'll guide your auger bit? Yes. yes. Once I'm happy with the way okay. they are, I can right. mark the top and bottom. And these are the tricks of working with uh, natural shapes, of course. You, you never know where exactly that tendon's going to go. That's right. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you've got to mark it as you go along. There's no... Uh, Try to make sure you get a good angle on there. And the vertical angles, if it's tilting this way, I guess you just have yeah, to remember that. Like this one looks like it goes inward just a little bit, so I have to remember to drill this one instead of right straight to this one, angle it in a little bit. And that's uh, the trick of it, the challenge of it. All right, and I see, oh, here's the brace right here, I see. This is, so you're getting uh, at the stage right now, it's marked, you can clamp this up and start the, the boring part. But I see on this one here. You already have one drilled out here. Yeah, you've done something around the opening there. What's going on there at this? We beveled it with this knife um, to keep the, the wood from splitting so there's ah. not pressure to split it all the way through because it's an awful tight friction fit. We don't use any glue. Uh, really? So I bevel front huh. and back so when we push this tenon in, it won't tear it or put pressure to split it all the way through the upright. 
What else can you do uh, to keep it from splitting? Well, we make sure we put the tendon part under a knot, so um, it is kind of like a natural uh, oh, I see. brace there where it won't pop so through. So the crack, crack out can't of go there. through there. Right, absolutely. All right. A natural peg. There you go. All right. Now what I'm going to ask you to do is skip the boring part because we got the tendons. We know how to bore a hole. Let's just see how the assembly goes. If you okay. want to do one All of right. these sides here, and I'll cl help clear the decks. My tools end up all over the place here. Front first. All right. One, two, three. Yeah. So this is going to be the front post you're going to do. Absolutely. Front upright. Mm-hmm. You look for our arrows. All right. Let's see now. I've got an arrow on this end pointing this direction. Yep. And we want these coming in from this section. And that's the, that's correct. All right. So that rocks in there. And we put this here, and we want to tap it up. All right. And, and then we do check to make sure the arrow is going the right way. Uh huh. Here's number two. All right, so tap in a little bit and then look and see. Easier to do it when it's just lightly tapped yeah, in. Yeah, otherwise if it's in there too much, then uh, it's all haphazard from uh -huh. there. Uh, there's number three Can't right there. here. There's method in this madness. Oh, there is a method to our madness. <laughs> well, and that arrow, all right, great. And I see how they're all pretty well aligned mm -hmm. to go into good. the next I'll one. Yeah, all right, in. I'll get out of the way. Here. And that's the big seat post. That's an ash. Yep, we want this for our uh, biggest ones for our seat to sit on. Right. And we want another big one at the bottom, relatively in between the two sizes, because uh, that's where people would generally put their feet. Put on. their feet, okay. Right. They're going to wear nice pattern, nice wear patterns in that apple. That's sad. And I, there was an orchard, I guess, you told me that went out? Yes, Sharon Springs Orchard, where they're cutting down these trees, and, uh, these dead apple trees. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're fortunate enough to have them to make this wonderful rung stock with. Them. Really great. Work. I love working with apples, but it's hard. You know, it's always like after a big ice storm or something like that that you get it. Are you ready for the clamps? Yes, right. I think we're going to use some clamps. All righty. I will help you out. You want to hang it off the end a little bit? Yes, it helps so uh, these things aren't knocking against on the bench. All right. Um, All right sometimes you get a, an ice storm, and it's very sad, you know, this wonderful orchard. Torn, the torn up by that. Luckily, uh, we get to make some use yeah, out of the wood. That's true. You get it. Get, it's not a complete loss. And so, all right. So we just keep uh, torquing it on up. Together. And you want to hit this one's shouldered here. Do I need to hit that? Yes. From, are you, okay, I'll oh, whack it back. Got a good angle. Hit that. Because I know you want to keep the shoulders. That beveled shoulder pushing into that pocket could split this. I reckon. Yes, that's true. All right. Have you got enough clearance there? Yeah, because you're getting the same thing here. You're getting. Needs to whack from this side here. All right, and torque on up. Torquing on that. Jumping off it. Yeah. All right, and I think I've about got the top there to get it. And so no glue, just a really, really friction <laughs> fit. <laughs> it's wonderful. Let's see. I see how flat the whole thing is lying in about the right plane there. I'm gonna tap that one to okay. a little bit more. Yeah, bring that one to the center. All right, there you go. I got it. Now I know you've got more precision adjustment, but I'm going to ask you to just uh, keep assembling it with a little bit looser joints, if that's all right, because I want to make sure we get to see this whole process through. Here's a one where we've already dr drilled it out and uh, uh, marked. All right, Seven, and you eight and nine. Uh huh. And you've already got a back assembly. Now this mm -hmm. I really admire in your chairs. These are just. Wonderful, the way this is kind of scooped out here. Nice it's contour just, for the back. Oh, yeah, it's great. And your spine goes right in there and just, just feels so comfortable. But this is a natural fork here. But did you put that bend in there, that sweep? Yes, here I, I heated it up with a torch and bent these. These, because they bend, I just turn them sideways enough so they bend a little bit for the back. But these I do have to oh, bend. Oh, my gosh. All right. Sometimes. Well, let's see how this goes. Now, does this go in here? Yes. All righty. Yeah. Oh, oh. That happens. Yep, that's a uh, part of the Friction back there. Fit. Yeah. And again, What's these aren't glued either. You no, just set them once it's driven in and locked in, it won't come apart yeah, anymore. Uh, all right. Yeah. There we go. All right, now that lay that down. Join it to the other just like that. side. Let's see. Actually. Have we got this turned over? I was thinking, saying, boy, that's, that's going to be a settee. Yeah, yeah. What have we got here? <laughs> oh, look, so they all line up, and that's what those numbers do. Yes. Keeping Hopefully. one from twisting, right? 
We did everything we we're supposed to. Mm -hmm. Ah. Very good. Want your hand. You've got a rubber mallet there, but again, using the clamps, you'll try and get these tenons coming okay, so that they go right up now. close, but not all the way to the shoulder, to that beveled shoulder. Right, on this because piece. then it could crack it or split it. So yeah. we want to make sure we get close as we can. All right. Now we usually like to trim the tenons so it uh, doesn't mar anybody on the legs. All righty. I'm guessing I am in your way, so let me get out of here. Oh, not at all. <laughs> That's great. See, we already had beveled the side over here, and uh -huh. now I'm just going to come at it from the other angle here. Take this chisel, and we just want to round these tendons a lot so they're not rubbing on our legs. These little nubs. I got we'll you. Touch it off with some sandpaper when we come to the more finishing. And process. I look in the design. You use curved pieces where people put their legs. Legs, back yeah, in. so they can tuck them in a little bit. Yeah, yeah very nice. It has nice. some great ideas. Well, it really sits wonderfully already. It's it's, it's quite stout, even though we haven't driven the tenons in all but the way. But now we like to level it. Level and. Uh, even though I, I dare you to find a house here in the Adirondacks that has a level yes, floor. there's very few level floors around here. This is a piece of marble my father got ah. from a World's Fair in New York City many years ago, and it's always level. Probably no for making moisture, fudge or something on it, yeah. Or dry outside, and so it's our sacred piece of marble, we call it. <laughs> <laughs> I take a sacred marble. Take a level, a, a little wedge, and then wedge it up until I, I like it. Mm -hmm. And then I just... Take Mark it here with a scriber about the height of where there's an opening. Oh, so you take the biggest gap. Yeah. Yes, the biggest gap, and, um, and and I just mark it along all the way around mm -hmm. with, with the scriber, and then uh, we cut it, and, and we always leave the scribe lines uh, so that it's easy to level instead of cutting the scribe lines away. Ah, all right. Take it down to the scribe mark. Very good. Now, I guess you have a little bit of leveling to do on these... Uh, top seat post, but you've got to put a seat in here now. Unless this is a potty chair, you've got to yes, do something yes. at this stage. So what's next? Yes, well, I have a piece of butternut here that we have, and what I usually do when I make the seats is I take a pencil here, uh -huh. and I just mark the lines underneath where I can cut these tabs down. Uh-huh. Like so this. Sit on the rungs. Oh, all right. Okay, and I'll come over here to the shopping block. All right. Ah, yes. Well, this is great. Now we get, this is great. Uh, running a chair making shop, uh, you always have a place to sit. <laughs> yes, That's yes. right. <laughs> right. Take sitting down on a job very seriously. Very here. nice. And then I'll chop out these tabs. So they just get a place to sit down on yes. the rungs on either end. So you use these three pieces there. Yeah. Yeah, once I've got these tabs cut, I'll go back and forth normally between here and the frame, try and put it on so it won't rock. And once it won't rock on the frame, then I can contour out the seat. Ah, and again, with the hatchet, you're doing yeah. a piece like that. Hatchet's certainly the best tool for that job. Yeah, I seem to be uh, comfortable with it. I yeah. know some folks have used scooped adzes and things. I just, uh, I guess I just used to. Well, you've got a long grain piece, easy to hold yeah. it right there yes. and get yeah. in there. So, right. so that's great. So that's chopped out now, and the sky is already sitting on the marks out of it. Um, so we take the shaving horse here, and uh, we take a, a bevel draw knife here, and we get the butternut slab. And he's already got some pieces roughed in here from the hatchet. Yeah. I just want to skew through it, which is sideway motion here. See, oh, I see. We're kind yeah. of pulling it on a diagonal. Yeah, it's, uh, right. Diagonal, because we're uh, trying to get rid of oh, those hatchet wonderful. marks, so they'll sit a little bit more flatter on there. Uh, Right. And then uh, also with the spoke shave, we'll take to the contouring of the seat area, and uh, we want to make sure uh, our so your bum fits sink in, in there. there. That's right. <laughs> You've got a, again a uh, kind of a convex spoke shave working down the grain. Right. In butternut. They come at it from both sides. Yes, butternut. This is a nice light wood to go through. And mm -hmm. Luckily, this has no knots, and the grain's going nice and smooth. So that's all right. That's the seat. Now you got to peg that on. You got a little peg deal here's, here. It looks just, like. Just uh, split out some uh, wood here, some ash. Mm-hmm. And uh, you just got a steel a plate peg. with a hole through it. A little, a little peg undercut. Peg. Yeah. Yes. All right. Yeah. And I just drive it through a, a bigger hole first, and then you have to work it on down through the holes. Oh, so you use a, a sequence okay. of holes there. As all long right. as my wood's absolutely dry. Uh -huh. I can get a nice peg that won't shrink. Ah, and that's important. All right, so you get the pegs to peg. Yeah, and I heard it pop on down there, and there's your 
peg okay. of perfection and just go working along there. Yep, and we take it down a couple of sides and we yes. drill holes and get it angled in there. So your seat will never come loose, but that, and those, those pegs are glued, I take it. Yep, the yeah. pegs are glued. That's the only part where we do use glue. Yeah, while I was sitting here, I noticed this, this is all scalloped. This is wild. Is this something you do too? And this is something else uh, that I do. Um, we all do the gouge work, but then we have a different style. This is a little left to right, uh, or right to left rather motion with the gouge. Well, I gotta see, let me show you show some of that there. All right. All right, because I, the best way to understand is to take a look. That's right. Now, if we can do this, we won't hit each other. Yeah, <laughs> with a, whack each other oh, as I we undo this. In my okay. And is this something you use a mallet on, or do you just just push it? I just push it. I use the force. I got this little lip here where I can put my thumb on this gouge mm -hmm. and just uh, arm it in there. I mean, when I go right to left. Mm -hmm. When you carve through it, I'll feel it every other couple of swipes to see if I got some burrs there that I need to take care of. Yeah. And cherry wood's nice light wood, but it darkens up after a while. Oh, you're going to end up with this wonderful textured surface. Yes, and this is what we end up with after a while, All right. All right, so you're doing some of these, you've got 120 chairs to do, and most yes. of, let's, let's take a look at the one you've got right here again. Uh, most of them are going to look like this. But you're going to do some with that uh, textured seat on it as well? Yes, Sky will do a couple of textured seats, I think, to make it uh, unique up there. You know? Ah, that's great. So you have a mix of things. Well, listen, there's just a huge variety in, in rustic furniture. I wonder if we could take just a minute and look down at the gallery and see what you got. We certainly can. We have several other pieces of rustic art down there, too. Let's go take a look. Excellent. Let All us right, proceed. Let's go. <laughs> Wow, all right, this is the real old thing. This is beautiful. Whoa. Yeah, that's right, Roy. It's made around 1850 oh. with rhododendron root, and it was in a house in Long Lake. Mm, it's tremendous. Now, why is it so dark? Actually, some people think this is a paint, but it's actually the varnish they used to use back then, and oh. over time it darkens with the color. Well, I can, it's entitled to after 175 years. This is a very famous set now, the settee, the two chairs, chairs. and the table. I've seen this in books, and this is wonderful. Yes, two very famous books. And this is tremendous. And this is a great example of how they combine the grotesque, the gnarly stuff, the wild, with the very controlled mosaic work on the top. I love that. Yeah. Yes, I do love that mosaic work. It's beautiful. And this is not a lost art. Absolutely not. In fact, we have another beautiful piece over here. Ah, is this a family piece right here? Yes, uh, my children helped me make this uh, piece. Ah. And the frame is made out of yellow birch where we've uh, kept the bark on by harvesting after Thanksgiving. Uh -huh. And uh, we have some cherry shelves, curly cherry shelves. Uh -huh. And the backing here is just some dry white birch bark that we got off some dead white birch trees. Ah, okay. And, and then the mosaic work on the top here. And again, you harvest this uh, wood during the winter when the sap is tight, uh, as they say, so the bark will stay it on. It tends to keep the bark on. All right, and beautiful uh, drawers here, doors uh, to your cabinets. And, and apple hinges. I see that app. I noticed that. It's cut so that it is self-closing. Wonderful workmanship in this, Barry. That was tremendous. And this one, too, here. Oh, my gosh. What's this burl? Yes, this is a cherry burl on the top here, Roy, and uh, oh. on the bottom here we have a beautiful piece wow. of yellow birch that we harvested to go along with it. Now this is something we'd harvest out of the rocks and the dirt, and uh, however we're harvesting it when there's snow on the ground. So when we're chipping <laughs> through, we're trying not to mar up that bark so much. <laughs> wow, out in the snow, and this again, what is this, this on the This apron front? is made out of yellow birch here, little you roots of yellow birch, and then uh, also some curly maple here. Mm, it's beautiful, but I tell you, this has got to be a favorite piece right here. A rocking chair is always sure to please. And this is tremendous use of wood there, particularly in the back. Look at that. What is this here? This is apple here, actually, with a beautiful different coloration. This is a cherry burl center and some locust pegs. Ah, and then down to There's the arm. There's beach armrest on either side. Ah, it's a curly cherry seat and good. some more locust pegs here that we fastened it. And it all, it's so harmonious, the way it all goes together. And I... I love the contrast of the, the ends of the tenons there. Going right through the uprights, yeah. Yeah, and there's the little mitered off like you do, and you can really see that hourglass that design we were that you do. About, right. Oh, it's tremendous. This is a, an absolutely beautiful, beautiful rocker here. All right, now this, though, has got to be a favorite, too. This is, uh, <laughs> again, 
a lot of burl wood on here. And this is, Scott, you call this the milk and cookies chair, is that right? Yes, I love milk and cookies. I love this chair. All right, so you've got, what is this right here on this arm? This armrest for the milk is a cherry burl armrest, and this is a hollowed out cherry burl bowl for the cookies. <laughs> Well, this is certainly what you need, I think, if you are going to be sitting. And it's wonderful. I think all of the work you've got has this look. It's still organic. It's still growing like it's going to set root again. We try to do that. No, oh, it's great. Well, hey, Barry Gregson, thank you for showing Welcome us around. Forward. I sure appreciate it. Sky Gregson. Roy, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for letting me work along with you. Hey, and thank you for joining me here in the Adirondacks. This has been Roy Underhill here in the Woodwright Shop. We'll see you next time. So long. To learn more about the Woodwright Shop and traditional woodworking, visit PBS online. You can find us at pbs.org. Major funding for the Woodwright Shop is provided by Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. We are PBS. Roy Underhill is the author of The Woodwright Shop and other books about traditional woodworking, published by the University of North Carolina Press and available at bookstores and libraries. Podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV. Roots, and we've got cherry burrows, we got uprights in the ceiling, oh we got rockers, God. we got it all. Gosh, you're more welcome to put that there. Well, how, like. long, how long does this stuff have to season before you can use it? Well, uh, we let it dry for about a year or two. Um, some pieces dry for a lot more, but we get to them. And you know exactly what's in here down in the bottom of this pile. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, hey, speaking of season, here's a seasoned hey, gentleman of woodcraft, Barry Gregson. Great to, to see, see you again. Good to see you. It's been about 10 years and I guess 10,000 chairs on your part. Now, you've got a big run of chairs here, too. What's this here? This is a side chair. we got to make another 120. We lost them, 120 of them in a fire up in Lake Placid oh, in a no. restaurant. So oh, we got to do it again. Oh, my gosh. But this is the kind of chair you're going to show us how to make now. Yep, this is a side <laughs> chair, the dining chair that we do. Uh, Dad mm. does other styles, rockers and fancy chairs, but this is the one I'm learning right now. Uh, mm. We start off here with the back uprights, and uh, we look for some front uprights to go with them and do the sides, both the sides, and then we do the back and then the front. Mm -hmm. um, other artists may do it differently. They may start with the, the back and the front and then put it on the sides, but this is how Dad showed me and my brothers. Yeah, side, side, back, front, seat. Yeah. That's right. All right. And I love the wood you're using here. You say ash uprights, is that right? And then uh, apple here. Yep, ash uprights, and this is an apple rung, and we uh, burnish that down until it gets to a hard cavity layer, and it gives us a little calco cat wow. color there. That's wonderful. This is right under the bark there, so that that beautiful brown color. And you let that, Barry, you age that outside in the rain? Yes, we let it sit for about six months with snow hitting it, the rain hitting it, and it, it tans the bark and then tans that cavity layer and makes it dark like that. Oh, it's beautiful. I tell you what, this, we're going to. Oh, I like that. And it all matches together, so the whole blend of woods here. But I tell you, we've got to take this away, because I would like to start with the bare bench and let you guys show me from the get-go how you do this. You've got all your wood gathered. You've let it dry. How do you begin? I have some maple uprights here. All right. So I guess that's where you start. Yes. We, right. we start with the uprights in the back. Uh, all right. We look for a nice bend here, a little kick out. So this is the back of the chair. Back here. All right. right. And I'm, I'm here at the front. All right. Yeah. And then just... The possibility. Does that work? Mm, well, that doesn't look like it has any kind of swoop or kickback right there to that. Um, oh, it's because you have an shape, but not, yeah, it's not as <laughs> okay. nice. It doesn't You're count. looking for Reject. something there. I, all right, I don't know what, but uh, maybe I'll know it when we see it and right. You look here, I see that's still... Podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, 
who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV. Major funding for the Woodwright Shop is provided by More than 40 million people who care for their cars and homes choose State Farm for their insurance. State Farm, a proud supporter of the Woodwrights Shop. If you head up into the beautiful Adirondack Mountains of New York, you're sure to find beautiful mountains, pristine lakes. But if you're lucky enough to get up into the hills over Scroon Lake, New York, you just might encounter a young lady working on a shaving horse making wonderful rustic furniture. Hello, Sky. Hi, Roy. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, folks. This is Sky Gregson. And Sky, I last saw you when you were, I think, 12 years old. But you've been helping out with the family making rustic furniture since, since when? Well, since about I was nine years old, and my family and I have been working on different facets of the rustic chair. Ah, this is wonderful. Rustic furniture here in the Adirondack style, where you take the sticks and the natural shapes of the forest and make this wonderful, durable, but still whimsical furniture. And I see you're working on a piece right there. What's that? That's right. I'm taking a blunt doll blade, a draw knife, yeah. and uh, we're shaving off the layers of the bark until we get to the hard layer of the apple. And this is an apple rung that you'd see on one of these chairs right here. Actually. And this is the kind of chair you're making right now. You know, I'd love to see how you build this whole thing. Is that something we could take a look at? Certainly. Let's head on over to the shop. I'll grab these sticks here. And if you grab these yellow birch roots, <laughs> All right. we'll take them on All right. over. Gnarly stuff. Here we go. Well, here we are at the shop. Oh, my gosh. you got enough wood here for a million chairs. Oh, this is great. <laughs> the lilac piles, we got yellow birch are under a knot, so um, it is kind of like a natural uh, I see. brace there where it won't pop. So the, the crack, crack can't go there. through there. Right, absolutely. All right. A natural peg. There you go. All right. Now, what I'm going to ask you to do is skip the boring part because we've got the tenons. We know how to bore a hole. Let's just see how the assembly goes if you okay. want to do one All of right. these sides here. And I'll cl help clear the decks. My tools end up all over the place here. Front first. All right. One, two, three. Yeah. So this is going to be the front post you're going to do. Absolutely. Front upright. Mm-hmm. You look for our arrows. All right. Let's see. Now, I've got an arrow on this end pointing this direction. Yep, and we want these coming in from this section. And that's the, that's correct. All right. So that rocks in there. And we put this here, and we want to tap it a little. All right. And, and then what do you do? check to make sure the arrow is going the right way. Uh-huh. Here's number two. All right, so tap in a little bit and then look and see. Easier to do it when it's just lightly tapped yeah, in. Yeah, otherwise if it's in there too much, then uh, I mean, it's all haphazard from uh -huh. there. Uh, there's number three Can't right there. here. There's method in this madness. Oh, there is a method to our madness. <laughs> well, and that arrow, all right, and that, great. And I see how they're all pretty well aligned they're to go into good. the next I'll one. Just yeah. try these all right, in. I'll get out of the way. And that's the big seat post. That's an ash. Yep, we want this for our uh, biggest ones for our seat to sit on. Right. And we want another big one at the bottom, relatively in between the two sizes, because uh, that's where people would generally put their feet Put on. their feet, okay. Right. They're going to wear nice pattern, nice wear patterns in that apple. That's sad. And I, there was an orchard, I guess, you told me, that went out? Yes, Sharon Springs Orchard, where they're cutting down these trees. Uh, the, these dead apple trees, mm -hmm. and uh, we're fortunate enough to have them to make this wonderful rung stock with. Really great. Wood. I love working with apple, but it's hard. You know, it's always like after a big ice storm or something like that that you get it. Are oh, you ready for the clamps? Yes, right. I think we're going to use some clamps. All righty, I will help you. Out. You want to hang it off the end a little bit? Yes, yeah, it helps so uh, these things aren't knocking against on the bench. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, sometimes you get a an ice storm, and it's very sad. You know, this wonderful orchard torn and torn up by that. Luckily, uh, we get to make some use yeah, out of the wood. That's true. You get a get. It's not a complete loss. And so, all right. So we just keep. Okay, um, sometimes they're a little bit wet, but uh, you don't want to put them too together too wet. They'll shrink or um, mm -hmm. expand. 
you know, we have these very dry, and then these could be just slightly moist, the uprights can, but the rungs got to be positively dry. All right. It looks like you're, you're working very thoughtfully there. I see rubber bands. Yes, I, I use these rubber bands here to hold the, these here in place so that they ah. won't um, I got you. twist. I, I got, got you. these marks on here. Well, here, let me do one, too. This is great. Yeah. I know they've been making rustic furniture for uh, 100, 200 years at least. I don't know what it would be without rubber yeah, bands and rubber some bands. masking tape. You've got is the great tape. technical. Well, that's one thing I've discovered. You know, figuring out you don't want to cut the piece, but you want to kind of visualize where it is. So you put masking tape around the length of it and eyeball it, and kind of imagine this thing before you commit. Yes, yeah, so right. we try to get a general idea before we start whacking away. All right. So temporary assembly here. And as long as the arrow is pointing here, good. Uh -huh. And then if these are pointing one, two, three, and I've got them numbered, and they're all pointing the same way. Ah, all right. So th then I can take them and mark them. So you don't want these to rotate along their axis because the tenon might be uh, uh, cockeyed. Yes. Yeah, like, okay. Here's one together here that's properly. bent. Ah, I see. All right. Yeah. So now you just mark on the sides, and that'll guide your auger bit. Yes. yes. Once I'm happy with the way okay. they are, I can right. mark the top and bottom. And these are the tricks of working with uh, natural shapes, of course. You, didn't, you never know where exactly that tendon's going to go. That's right. Yeah, mm. so you've got to mark it as you go along. There's no... Uh, Try to make sure you get a good angle on there. And the vertical angles, if it's tilting this way, I guess you just have yes, to remember that. Like this up. one looks like it goes inward just a little bit, so I have to remember to drill this one instead of right straight to this one, mm -hmm. angle it in a little bit. And that's uh, the trick of it, the challenge of it. All right, and I see, oh, here's the brace right here, I see. This is, so you're getting, uh, at the stage right now, it's marked, you can clamp this up and start the, the boring part. But I see on this one here. You already have one drilled out here. Yeah, you've done something around the opening there. What's going on there at this? We beveled it with this knife um, to keep the, the wood from splitting so there's uh -huh. not pressure to split it all the way through because it's an awful tight friction fit. We don't use any glue. Uh -huh. So really? I bevel front huh. and back so when we push this tenon in, it won't tear it or put pressure to split it all the way through the upright. What else can you do uh, to keep it from splitting? Well, we make sure we put the tenon, but it doesn't quite match there. And you yeah, got the okay. hourglass shape going, but this still doesn't have enough kick out. All right. No. How about this one? I don't know. Let's see then. So you just keep mm, bringing them in. This looks nice, but it probably would go better at this height, huh? We can cut so off that can... little hoof down oh, there. Oh, all right. And I, I can see it there. This does have a kind of symmetry to it. Nice yes, hourglass a shape. nice hourglass shape here. Back. Oh, this it's where the back's going to be. And that's why you need so many pieces of wood so you can draw from this inventory and yeah, sift through a whole slew of them and see what works. <laughs> see what works. See what wants to play together. Right. All right. We have now. We're going to lay one of these down here. Uh huh. And uh, we're going to take a front upright here that we've put aside, and we look to make sure the air is like this. So you decide what the orientation is front to back now. Mm -hmm. And then uh, here's a seat rung I did, and I put the number one with an arrow, so I'll put it like that. All right. Now, wait a minute. Now, this one has a tenon on it. Uh, this yes. has been trimmed down. Can we see how you do that before we go any farther? Sure. Yeah, let's all take right. a look at that. What have you got? Oh, all right. Here um, is a um, tenon cutter that we use, and this has got a metal hole in here, and we got two uh, sides to shave it down. We try to aim uh -huh. going centered down on there so it uh, gets a nice little shoulder on there. All right, so it's like a pencil sharpener kind of thing there. Yeah, yeah absolutely. With two blades. That's right. All right. And we'll shave this down. Crank it's it down there with the brace. Rung, yep. Uh -huh. And uh, peeling it right around. That, see how well now this is one you can out. buy, I guess. Uh, people are making these now, but uh, I know you guys had this made by a machinist for you. So you make them yourself. Though, is this a wooden one? This is a wooden one that Dad made quite some years ago, and he put his own metal plate on there, and ah. that's another type of uh, pencil sharpener type this, deal. Sky, you must have been doing this when you were very little. Uh, you remember doing this as a little girl? Yep, I remember doing this, and my brothers as well. We're all down here at Dad's little elves. <laughs> in the workshop making chairs. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's great. All right, so that's the tenons, and this will cut, I guess, a little bit bigger one, but you have to be very precise, I imagine, in the size of these things. That's right. We want it straight so when we uh, put them through the uprights that it doesn't bust them out. Ah, that would, that would be bad. Yeah, that would bust be bad. Bust them out would be bad. All right. It's so cracking. here we go. We have got uh, an upright back, an upright front, and now you're laying out the cross pieces. They've got their tenons on them, and I guess you want these to be really good and dry. Yep. These are pretty dry.
Podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV. Major funding for the Woodwright Shop is provided by... More than 40 million people who care for their cars and homes choose State Farm for their insurance. State Farm, a proud supporter of the Woodwrights Shop. If you head up into the beautiful Adirondack Mountains of New York, you're sure to find beautiful mountains, pristine lakes. But if you're lucky enough to get up into the hills over Scroon Lake, New York, you just might encounter a young lady working on a shaving horse making wonderful rustic furniture. Hello, Sky. Hi, Roy. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, folks. This is Sky Gregson. And Sky, I last saw you when you were, I think, 12 years old. But you've been helping out with the family making rustic furniture since, since when? Well, since about I was nine years old, my family and I have been working on different facets of the rustic chair. Ah, this is wonderful. Rustic furniture here in the Adirondack style, where you take the sticks and the natural shapes of the forest and make this wonderful, durable, but still whimsical furniture. And I see you're working on a piece right there. What's that? That's right. I'm taking a blunt doll blade, a draw knife, yeah. and uh, we're shaving off the layers of the bark until we get to the hard layer of the apple. And this is an apple rung that you'd see on one of these chairs right here. Actually. And this is the kind of chair you're making right now. You know, I'd love to see how you build this whole thing. Is that something we could take a look at? Certainly. Let's head on over to the shop. I'll grab these sticks here. And if you grab these yellow birch roots, <laughs> All right. we'll take them on All right. over. Gnarly stuff. Here we go. Well, here we are at the shop. Oh, my gosh. you got enough wood here for a million chairs. Oh, this is great. <laughs> the lilac piles, we got yellow birch roots, and we've got cherry burrows, we got uprights in the ceiling, oh, we got rockers, we got it all. Gosh. You're more welcome to put that there. Well, how, like. long, how long does this stuff have to season before you can use it? Well, uh, we let it dry for about a year or two. Um, some pieces dry for a lot more, but we get to them. And you know exactly what's in here down on the bottom of this pile. Oh, yeah, that's right. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, hey, speaking of season, here's a seasoned hey, gentleman of woodcraft, Barry Gregson. Great to, Good to see, see you again. Good to see you. It's been about 10 years and I guess 10,000 chairs on your part. Now, you've got a big run of chairs here, too. What's this here? This is a side chair. we got to make another 120. We lost them, 120 of them in a fire up in Lake Placid oh, in a no. restaurant. So oh, we got to do it again. Oh, my gosh. But this is the kind of chair you're going to show us how to make now. Yep, this is a side <laughs> chair, the dining chair that we do. Uh, Dad mm. does other styles, rockers and fancy chairs, but this is the one I'm learning right now. Uh, mm. We start off here with the back uprights, and uh, we look for some front uprights to go with them and do the sides, both the sides, and then we do the back and then the front. Mm -hmm. um, other artists may do it differently. They may start with the, the back and the front and then put on the sides, but this is how Dad showed me and my brothers. Yeah, side, side, back, front, seat. Yeah. That's right. All right. And I love the wood you're using here. You say ash uprights, is that right? And then uh, apple here. Yep, ash uprights, and this is an apple rung, and we uh, burnish that down until it gets to a hard cavity layer, and it gives us a little calco 